Hello everyone, my name's Amanda, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to crochet these cute jellyfish keychains. Let's take a look at the materials required to make this project. Now that we've gone over the materials that are required, let's begin. For round one, we're going to start off with a magic ring. For the magic ring, we're going to make six single crochets. If you need help with making these magic rings, I have a separate video which I can link below um, where I go over how I create uh, the magic ring. There's different methods, um, but I find this method the most secure because there's two loops through the center of the magic ring. So make sure that there's no way that your project can come unraveled. So we're just going to quickly create six single crochets, pull up a loop, and then pull the two loops tight using the method shown here. If you need a slow detailed video, please click the link for my separate video. All right, and then to close off my magic rings, I always uh, slip stitch into the first stitch. Now I also have uh, an issue where I make the first single crochet of my magic ring too tight, so I find it difficult to get the hook back through. So if you uh, can, try to make that first stitch a little bit looser, you won't run into the issue that I always do. So here's the slip stitch. And now we're ready to start round two. So for round two, we're going to increase in each stitch around. The increase, of course, is just two single crochets in each stitch. And at the end of this round, you should have 12 stitches. I'll do a quick demonstration of what this pattern looks like, and then we'll jump to round three. So here we are for round three. The pattern for this round is one single crochet and then one increase. We're going to repeat this six times around and at the end of this round we should have 18 stitches. I'm going to jump ahead and meet you at the end of the round so we can go over the pattern for round four. For round four we're going to create two single crochets and then one increase and we're going to repeat this pattern six times around. This is the final round of increases and at the end of this round we should have 24 stitches. After this we're going to do a few rounds of single crochets to build up the body of the jellyfish. For rounds five through eight we're simply going to be single crocheting in each stitch around. This will be building up the base of the body, and each round should have 24 stitches in it. I'm going to jump ahead, and I'll meet you guys after you've finished your eighth round. Alright, so now I've finished round eight, and now we have to attach our keychain. I have a separate video where I show how I attach keychains to Amigurumi, so I'll link that below if you haven't seen it already. In that video, I show how I make this little metal insert. So what we're going to do is take our metal insert, which I make with jewelry pliers and a paper clip, and we're going to insert it into the center of the magic ring from the inside going out of the body. What's going to happen is we'll poke up through the center of that magic ring and we'll attach our keychain to the top. I'm going to jump ahead after I already have my keychain attached. All right, so now we've attached our keychain, let's continue on with round nine. So for this round, we're going to do two single crochets and then a decrease and repeat six times around. At the end of this round, we're going to have 18 stitches. And also in round nine, I use an invisible decrease. After we finish this round, we're going to attach our safety eyes. So let's jump ahead and I'll show you guys how I place the safety eyes for my jellyfish keychains. 
All right, I've completed round nine. Now we're gonna take a look at safety eye placement and how to secure the backing by melting it down. For eye placement, I like to place mine six stitches apart between rounds seven and eight. So we're gonna count two rows down and then we're gonna place the first eye and then the second eye six over. After we've placed the eyes, you wanna grab a lighter. This step is optional, but it does help make the eyes very secure. What I like to do is make sure the backing is really pressed down and be very careful here. I just light the back of the safety eye. This is on the inside of your work. Use the side of a lighter to press it down and make it flat. You can see here I didn't make it quite flush enough so I'm just melting it down a little bit more and then using the side of the lighter to press it down. And this will ensure that there's no way that your safety eye will pop off. And this is what your jellyfish should look like so far. So on to round 10, what we're going to do is do one single crochet and one decrease six times around. But for this round, we're working in the back loop only. So here we have our first single crochet into the back loop. And then to decrease in the back loop only, we can't use the invisible decrease method. So we have to go with the traditional decrease where we bring up a loop in the next stitch, move into the next stitch, bring up a third loop, yarn over and pull through all three. And that will decrease those two stitches together. Then we're gonna repeat with one single crochet in the back loop only, and then another decrease in the back loop all the way around. And the reason we're doing this in the back loop is to attach the skirt, which we'll do after we finish the body. So I'll jump ahead to the next round. All right, so here we are on the final round of the body. We have to make sure we also stuff the jellyfish body firmly this round. So the pattern for this round is to do six decreases. And I like to stop after three decreases and stuff the body firmly and then finish off with the final three decreases. You can use the invisible decrease method for this round and then I'll meet you to show you how I like to sew the body closed. All right, so after you've finished off the body, I've just cut a long tail of yarn and attached it to a yarn needle. Then you're going to take your yarn needle and go underneath the front loop of the first stitch you made in round 11. We're going from the outside towards the inside. And we're gonna go underneath that front loop of all six stitches from round 11. You want to pull your yarn tail tight as you move through those final six stitches. And once you're finished, you just want to weave in that yarn tail and hide it somewhere in the body. Here's a look at the finished jellyfish body. Now we're going to be working in that round of front loops we left behind in round 10. All right, so what we're going to be doing is working our skirt into this front loop row that we left behind. So we want to find the front and the end of that row and we're going to attach our yarn into the end stitch. So what we're going to do is bring our hook and go underneath that final front loop from round 10. Here we go underneath. And then you want to grab your yarn, keep the tail on the right. We're going to yarn over and pull through that loop. Then we're going to yarn over one more time and pull through and pull on that tail just to secure it. Then the pattern is three half double crochets and a slip stitch. So to start off, we're going to be working in the first front loop we left behind from round 10 and work three half double crochets into that loop. Here's our second one. And then we want to be wrapping our half double crochets over this little yarn tail as we work around to really weave it in and make it secure. So there's our third half double crochet. Now we're going to slip stitch under the next stitch. Now these stitches are gonna be really close together so you have to be careful that you don't accidentally skip one Again, the check is at the end, you should have three half double crochets and then a slip stitch ending with nine little bumps on your skirt. And I'll show you what that looks like. Keep repeating this pattern around to the end of the row and I'll show you how to close off the skirt. Okay, so I've just finished off my last half double crochet. 
Here's a look at what my jellyfish looks like right now. So I've cut a tail of yarn and you just have to pull that tail through the last half double crochet and attach a yarn needle. For this particular instance, I'm going to be using a long sharp tip needle just because the eye of the needle is very narrow. So to weave this in, we need to find that stitch that we started in. Once you've located that final stitch, we're going to take our yarn needle and go underneath that loop. This does count as the final slip stitch of the round as well, so we're starting off and ending in the same stitch. After going underneath that stitch, we're also going to work into the top of the half double crochet. And this will simulate the final stitch while also closing off the round and making it look very seamless. So we're just going to make sure that we pull this stitch nice and tight so it doesn't come loose and also so it blends in with the tension of all the other stitches. You're just going to have to kind of fiddle around with it till it has the right appearance that you like. And you want to make sure when you go under that half double crochet you go through all three bars of the half double crochet. I did miss the final bar so I'm just going underneath it now. And then we're going to weave in to the body to hide this tail. Here's a look at the finished body with the skirt attached. Like I mentioned, you should have nine little bumps in the skirt all the way around. Now we're ready to move on to making the tentacles of our jellyfish keychains. In total, I have two long tentacles and three smaller tentacles which go around the outside of the jellyfish. For placement, I have the two long tentacles in the middle, and the three small tentacles are in the top, the bottom right, and the bottom left. To start off, we're going to look at how to create the long tentacles. So, to start off, we're going to create a slip knot and we're going to chain 14 stitches. If you need help on how to create a slip knot or do a chain, I also have a video available on YouTube. I'll leave a link to that below. After you've completed your last chain, we're then going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook. You want to make sure that you're working into the top loop only and not the back bump when you're working across this row as we're making a curly cue. And you need to only work in the top loop to ensure that the tentacle curls as much as possible. I'm going to jump ahead here to the end and I'll show you how to finish off the tentacle. Just make sure you single crochet all the way across. Once you get to the end of the row, to finish off, we're just going to do two single crochets in the final chain. After you finish your final single crochet, you just want to pull up a loop and grab scissors and cut your tail of yarn so you have just enough yarn to sew the tentacle to the body. Then pull the yarn loop through. Just want to curl up the end of that tentacle I like mine really curly, so I like to twist it a little bit more. And you're done! So for the short tentacles, we're going to start off exactly the same with a slip knot, and then we're going to chain 11. Just quickly do those chains here. Then the process for the short tentacles is identical to the long. We're going to be single crocheting in the second chain from the hook, making sure we're only working into the top loops. And then we're going to single crochet in each stitch across all the way to the end of the row. At the end of the row, we're going to finish off exactly the same with two single crochets in the final chain. Here's our final single crochet and again we're going to pull up a loop 
grab your scissors and cut the yarn tail so you have enough room to attach the tentacle to the body. Just pull through that loop and then again we want to twist up the tentacle so it's curly. And you're done! Here's a look at the three short tentacles completed. And here are the long tentacles completed. Now let's take a look at the placement of the tentacles. This diagram shows the underneath shot of where I place mine. The orange lines indicate the placement of the long tentacles and the dark blue lines indicate placement of the short tentacles. Alright, so now I'm going to demonstrate how I attach tentacles to the body. The one I'm going to be attaching is this one highlighted in the diagram here. So with your yarn attached to the tentacle, I like to go underneath a bar in the middle. And we only need to go underneath two bars to attach this. So after you go underneath that bar, we're going to weave into the middle of the tentacle and then weave the yarn needle underneath the second bar of the body. And then pull through. And then I like to just tie these two little tails of yarn together in a knot. And then after that knot's tug secure, I double knot it to make sure that the knot doesn't come undone. Here's the second knot pulled tight. Once the knot is secure, you're just going to take these yarn tails, find the space right underneath the knot, and weave the yarn into the body. And here's a finished look of your jellyfish with all five tentacles attached. As you can see here, we have our two long tentacles right in the middle, and our three shorter tentacles along the outside. Here's another look at the diagram so you can see what the diagram looks like compared to the body. And you're done! Thanks so much for watching this video everyone, I hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you in the next one.